star. And there's yeah. one more I think we want to look at. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty clear, isn't it? And this one, what was this about? This was the Demon Eyes poster, uh, 1996, the Demon Eyes poster. And now, if they would have gone to that's that... That's Tony Blair's Demon Eyes. That's supposed Eyes, to be though, Tony yeah. Blair, but he came in anyway. He actually came in anyway. It was supposed to be an anti-Blair uh, type of poster. I think that if they would have gone for that kind of approach today, it would have been a disaster because I think that what people want, what the, the savvy uh, electorate wants, is they want something that is straight down the line, something that they can, they, they can ascertain for themselves whether they believe it or they don't believe it. And once you start getting into really nasty types of digs, such as the demon eyes were, I mean, that might have been OK for that uh, era, but not, but not 2010. The poster actually got withdrawn, I think, didn't it, after objection? It, it, it was. Everyone objected about that particular person, and I think that they've learnt a lot from that. It's interesting that they brought uh, Saatchi and Saatchi back. Well, actually, it's not Saatchi and Saatchi, it's M and C Saatchi. Mm. It's it's interesting that they've got them back. It's very, very unusual for, for uh, any political party to have two agencies working at the same time on, 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 a, on a poster campaign at this stage. It says a hell of a lot about what's going on behind the scenes at uh, Tory HQ. You don't think, though, that this might all seem very old-fashioned, particularly to younger people in the era of, you know, the blog, the Twitter and, oh, I don't know, 24-hour news, any number of things, which yes. is, things are happening all the time. Aren't posters a terribly static way of trying to appeal to yes. the public? Yes. With, with Twitter, with Facebook and all the rest of it, you're right. Uh, this is a Web 2.0 uh, era where people are going to be social networking and stuff like that. But I still think there is one place for the poster, and that is something which is sharp, short, to the point. Why? Because that poster would then elicit some type of a debate. And where would the debate take place? I give you Twitter, I give you Facebook, and so on and so forth. So I think what the poster is, it is the spark. The fuse is as long as the Web2 community wants it to be. Jonathan Gabay speaking to me a little earlier. Well, coming up, we'll be joined by viewers on BBC One for a full roundup of national news. That's with Michelle Hussein. Just a reminder that if you're away from the television set and you want to keep up to date, you can always watch BBC News live on the web. There's a line that spans civilizations. It does feel like the Old Testament, really. It's delicious. I'm amazed they didn't get the bit that's in my mouth. <laughs> Follow me, Simon Reeve, around the globe in my most challenging adventure yet. You're getting it. There you go. Tropic of Cancer continues tonight at 8 on BBC Two. I've got a little story. Tell me why should it be true? I've got a little story. Tell me why should it be true? I've got a little story. One more time. Tell me why should it be true? It had to be you. Sample the great American songbook. Friday at 9 on BBC4. urges BA and its cabin crew to get back around the negotiating table. As the strike continues, David Cameron accuses the Prime Minister of weakness against the Unite Union. British Airways says the majority of its passengers have been unaffected by this weekend's action. The union disagrees. The leader of the Catholic Church in England and Wales speaks out to defend the Pope over the child abuse scandal. And there's, frankly, there's no, there's no strong reason for him to do so. China's latest attempt to break into the global car market, Volvo, is sold to a Chinese company. Oh, I feel so good! And Jensen Button steers clear of the crashes to win the Australian Grand Prix.
Good afternoon. Gordon Brown's told the BBC that the government will do everything possible to get British Airways and its striking cabin crew to reach an agreement. The Prime Minister was speaking as David Cameron accused him of weakness in the face of the strike action by Unite. On the second day of the latest stoppage, about 40% of flights from Heathrow were cancelled. Gatwick was operating normally. Here's our political correspondent, Carol Walker. The clocks may have gone forward, but the Conservatives are accusing Labour of presiding over a return to the industrial strife of the 1970s. Unite is Labour's biggest backer, and the Tory leader claimed Gordon Brown had failed to take a tough stand because he's in hock to the unions. A leader should say, of course, if people want to go to work, they should go to work, and I back them going to work. And I think the unions have scented weakness in the government, and that's one of the reasons why we're seeing quite so many strikes. Despite the disruption to flights and the threat of a rail strike, Labour say there's less industrial action now than under the Conservatives. The Prime Minister dismissed the charge of weakness. We want British Airways workers to be back at work. So we have said we don't want this strike, but we also want to make it possible for arbitration and negotiation to take place. And so there's got to be uh, some negotiation between the, the management and the workforce, and we